So what I'd like to do now is invite all the speakers to the front, please, and then open the floor to questions, please. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So, um, Adam, I think you had a question for David, who's talking in the break. Oh, uh, yeah, David. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain that, that bit about the, um, the, the Q1, 2, 3, 4, and move backwards again off the stack? What were the four layers? Because everyone's very familiar with MQLs, SQLs, SALs, WIN, all that sort of stuff. But you were talking about the time to campaign planning and so forth. <laughs> so it's just beeping. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, starting from your opportunities and your revenue, uh, we can look back and once we're monitoring the, the funnel and the process, we can see how long it takes for people to move through the funnel, move through the stages. So you can kind of backtrack and go, okay, if I need the uh, opportunity revenue uh, in this quarter, it's going to take me uh, three months probably to get them through the sales funnel on average. So, and of course, some things will take uh, longer and some things will take shorter, but if we work on kind of averages and probabilities, we can get a measure of what's going on there. Uh, so we can move that back. And then once we get back to our MQLs, that's, that's kind of where we move away from there's a process that people are moving through to um, the more the marketing idea of uh, marketing is communicating with people and trying to drive interest. And your MQL is kind of want to be someone putting their hand up and marketing noticing that. And maybe to help them put their hand up, but doing that point. So then from there, you're, you're trying to work at what campaigns uh, you can run and how long does it take a campaign to influence people and how many people you'd likely to get uh, influence to engage to produce an MQL and push up through. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. And, but basically, we should be thinking about two year plans rather than just annual plans as well. Yeah, yeah. So, depending on how long it takes to go, to go through, uh, if your marketing campaign takes six months to, to run through all the touches and push people through, and then the, your sales process is going to take another uh, three months to get through, then you look at nine months in advance of when you actually want your revenue to start coming in. So, then if you're thinking about planning that campaign, you're, you're starting to look a year in advance of. Um, Oh, yep, is this on? Um, can you talk us through how big your team was through your whole transformation and then the types of skills that you had and the roles for each of you on your team to get you to where you need to be? Sure. So um, at the time that this transformation was really initiated, I came in to build the um, marketing operations department. Um, and so this department actually started with uh, three people, including myself. Uh, we we added on two people from Europe within about four months. And by the end of the first year, we had a team of seven people. And these people were responsible for um, analytics, marketing analytics. They were responsible for marketing marketing automation uh, deployment. So there are people keeping the campaigns running through the technologies. So rather than teaching every marketer in our business how to use them all, we centralized the support of that um, with specialists. Um, there were people who were responsible for the marketing operational processes and the actual technical systems integrations. So we were building on the back end with specialists while having um, specialists who could uh, interface with the front end and do the deployments. Um, by the end of this whole journey, so that was 2014 to 2017, um, the team became and is still now about 17 people. Um, it, but they support all over the world, uh, including beyond the, the mature markets regions I had shown. Thank you. Okay, one more question. Uh, Sorry, it's been for, uh, for you. Um, when you talk through your journey, and particularly around kind of attribution, and you had like a few years of uh, last touch, yeah. do you think that that was something you had to go through to get the maturity for that kind of multi-touch or your model? Or do um, you think you could have fast-tracked any of those areas? Yeah, I, I, I do think that it w would have been possible to have deployed um, a, a different model at the at the point of inception. It might even have been easier because we had to tell people the one, the last touch story and then we had to reteach them the new attribution story. The reason we did it in the way that we had done is because the um, we, we wanted to, as much as possible, leverage the native capabilities of the systems we had already invested in rather than bogging our, ourselves down um, – too much, much like Robert was mentioning, with too much tech all at once. And we were all a bit apt to shiny new object syndrome. Uh, you know, so we were just put, trying to put some, some discipline, but we had 
told people that we were laying out a path for it to be something more in the future, so they were expecting it. I have a question for you as well. So okay. you talked about um, deploying marketing plan for your field marketeers, and then you talk about regular cadence reporting to review which is a 12-month plan <clears throat> your campaign activity. Do you know how how long would you leave the campaign running? in real life before you make drastic changes or incremental changes based on the results that you generate from your regular reporting? So I think the answer is it depends. It depends on the purpose of the campaign. Um, and you know, if you take a nurture campaign, for example, ours are structured and built out in an automated fashion in Eloqua such that it's an endless cycle. People never ever leave it once they're uh, tagged for the campaign. Um, however, they won't recycle through if there's not new content. So it's really at the discretion of the of the marketers to be monitoring how people are moving through and uh, identify when is the proper cadence to be refreshing their content based upon how it's performing. Um, you know, with, with other types of campaigns, uh, lead generation campaigns, there are some that are going to be um, very defined point in time because there's an end date, you know, in the future. So if we're partnering on a webinar, that's that's running until the webinar happens. Um, and if you are doing kind of an always on content syndication, so when we run integrate campaigns, for example, we refresh them on a quarterly basis. Through the closed loop reporting, we're able to see what works, what doesn't. And it's really more of a matter of moving our money around um, you know, swapping in good content, but kind of keeping things going almost endlessly. Mm -hmm. So even though our review process, our reporting process is monthly and quarterly and our kind of target setting process is annual, there's not some sort of like magical flips that the switches that get flipped on and off on these cadences. Mm -hmm. Robert, question for you. Um, you've got Marketo, you obviously know Marketo quite well, but you've also got uh, <coughs> Adobe Experience Managers, your content management system. How are the two, obviously, Marquette are now being acquired by Adobe. How are the two companies coming together from your perspective? Better than the other merchants I've seen. Um, I think the challenge for them at the moment is what are the um, shiny object integrations they can offer? So I know that they've looked at um, the ability in Marketo when you're editing an email to click on the banner and rather than, again, this speaks to the efficiency perspective. Rather than downloading that image, emailing it to your design team, the design team emailing it to the right person who's going to do it, that person opening up Photoshop, editing it, you know, 15 steps later and a couple of days later you get back the uh, image you're going to use. In Marketo you can actually click on it and edit and load Photoshop online directly and, and actually edit it within the system. It's one of the things they're looking at. Um, so I think yeah, if you're looking at an all-in-one marketing system, they have a very strong position there. Okay, guys, uh, one more question, then we could try to move on. Well, this is a question for David, but I think Leslie and, and Robert, you might have an opinion on this as well. Um, so when, at what point is, do you stop using the native reporting capabilities of the, of the applications and tools and look to have a, an all-encompassing business intelligence tool that perhaps looks at everything? Is there a, is there a cut off? do you think? Well, I mean, I think it's a, it's once you get to an audience that's not using those tools themselves on a day-to-day -day basis, it doesn't make sense for someone who is not in Marketo uh, to use it, to really go in there just for reporting, if they then also have to go into Salesforce for um, their, that side of the reporting. So it's once you've got people that are wanting, that are looking at reporting from multiple systems, uh, that it makes sense to actually bring that out of the individual systems if you can't put it all in one of them. Um, yeah. I would, I would agree, and I would also add that once you get to a state of maturity where you know what your measures are that you want to be measuring and you want people to be taking decisions from that and that is clear, I think that, you know, <clears throat> having a system that excuse me, <clears throat> has connective tissue is critical. We, we don't have that, by the way, but we want it. It depends what you're trying to do. <coughs> um, if you are a marketing director for, oh, thank you. If you're a marketing director for, say, a region, you know, your KPIs and objectives are going to be different and what you're looking at is going to be different. Um, typically, you go into an organization, a lot of people start using Google Analytics to say, well, this is how well I'm doing. Um, they should be pulling that data from that system to the dashboard, like you mentioned. But if you're running a project to say, okay, we're going to look at how well the website's doing or your, your job as a website manager, 
use the appropriate system. So don't stop using the, the inbuilt systems reporting capabilities because they're quite often built with that in mind. So yeah, be aware of what you're trying to do. Right, guys, uh, we're just going to be kicked out of the room, so let's thank all the speakers and congratulate <laughs> <laughs>